Rocky Aquila with Steve Evans back at the Nashville Motor Raceway getting ready for the second of two 50 lap qualifiers here as Butch Miller, the man who has dominated the stock car connection so far this year, gets ready to go as we peek through the windshield of Steve Grissom. And a green is out, Steve. Indeed, the green is out. Let's watch Miller on the inside, the 52 car. Will he lead? Yes, he will lead into turn number one. Here is the end car, Steve Grissom. He is currently in the eighth position. Just in front of him is the Bluebird, number 84, Bob Seneca, and 16, David Green. Down the back straightaway and in to turns three and four. Miller leads the field off. So the ASA star being hounded by three NASCAR stars. That is Rusty Wallace, number 22, Bobby Allison, and 98, Jody Ridley, back there in the fourth spot. And our end car driver, Steve Grissom, he is in the eighth position. He is trying to get around the high side on Seneca, and I believe he pulled that off. There he is in that red and white number 31 car going by on the outside, taking Bob Seneca. So Steve Grissom moves up, an all-pro champion, an excellent young driver from down Alabama way, moves down that back straightaway. There is Seneca in the blue 84 car. Right behind him, that is the gray and white 97 of Ted Musgrave, who challenges Seneca now as they come off turn four and down the front straightaway. Seneca and Musgrave are now running eighth and ninth, respectively. Look at this. Miller has moved out to a big lead as Bobby Allison in that brand new automobile out of the Ray Dillon shop, North Liberty, Indiana. A prototype car uh, sits in that third spot, Steve. And just behind Allison is the bright blue Thunderbird. That's 98 Jody Ridley. And uh, he is followed by 48 Robbie Crouch from Boy up in Vermont. David Green, the 16 car, 31 Steve Grissom. And right behind Grissom is the 84 car of Seneca and Musgrave. There is the in car look from the Steve Grissom automobile as he sweeps off turn number four and heads down that front straightaway. About 130 miles an hour here, Steve, as they get into turn number one. You know, Seneca might have been a bit surprised that this all-pro driver Grissom got around him as easily as he did. Seneca, now his tires warmed up. He's uh, he's going after him. He wants, a little, he wants him back. Well, these guys have raced against each other on a number of occasions, so they're both experienced short track stars. There goes Grissom, right behind him, Seneca, and Musgrave, the man who he seems to move up slowly and quietly in these races. As we said earlier, he's finished second behind Butch Miller in all three Stock Car Connection events. And here is that race for the third spot. 22, Bobby Allen's in the red and white car and the unmistakable blue Thunderbird of number 98, Jody Ridley. Two old warriors having a great time in that third spot. And there's the battle for fifth. There is Robbie Crouch in the 48 car, followed by the number 16 car of David Green. What a job he has done. Right, so those two guys going at it, north to south, as we watch Green try to poke underneath the Robbie Crouch down the front straightaway, then tuck back into line as the racetrack continues to provide racing room in two or three grooves as we watch Grissom down the back straightaway. Saw that little bump as he came off turn number two. Crouch and Green at it again. Crouch high off turn four, gives Green a shot to get underneath him. And Grissom is right there behind him. There's Crouch, 16, that white car of green. There's Grissom, he gets our driver's eye view of that battle between Crouch and Green right ahead of him. And right behind him, of course, is Bob Seneca. You know, they're not just getting off the throttle rock as they go into these turns. In many cases, they're using quite a bit of brake. And especially if you're coming up on a, a slower car, you don't just coast up behind him, you race them behind him and jam on the brakes. So the brake's very important on these race cars. A oh, good race between uh, Crouch and Green, and uh, boy, is uh, Steve Grissom getting a good view of that. Of course, either one of those guys bobbled just a little bit, and Grissom will go by him in a wink. As we watch Crouch and Green, there goes uh, Grissom right behind him, down into turn number one, off turn two. Crouch holding that high line, and Green just can't seem to get quite enough speed on him down the straightaways to get underneath. There they are lapping a slower automobile. That's where the brakes are being used when you have to set that race car up and get into position. There goes Green, ducking in behind Robbie Crouch, down off turn two, down the back straightaway. Just not quite enough speed on the part of Green to get by him. And it looks as if, Steve, that Grissom can't quite move in on him. He gets in a little bit as they get into those corners, but then those two race cars ahead of him seem to pull away and down the straights. Now, Steve Grissom concentrating on trying to catch that 16 car, but also he's got to defend the turf he's already won because Bob Seneca is right behind him, putting on a lot of pressure. And right behind Seneca, of course, is Musgrave. So he's got two chargers 
right behind him as we watch Steve Grissom come down the front straightaway. And again, uh, Green holds his ground. And there, Bob Seneker dove underneath and a spin by Musgrave. So Seneker got by Grissom and then Musgrave probably trying to get by him as well. Spins off the racetrack. We've got a yellow. It doesn't look like there's been any damage to that 97 car, but it'll definitely slow the action down and will certainly hurt Musgrave's chances of moving up. It'll look like Musgrave, as Seneker passed Musgrave, moved up behind 31 Grissom and tangled with the back end of Grissom's automobile. Grissom went a little bit sideways, but held on. Musgrave, not so. Around he went. Well, Steve, now the pressure is on Ted Musgrave to qualify for the big 400 lapper. There he goes, sideways. Yes, he got a little over eager as uh, Seneca moved in underneath Grissom, and then there was no place for Musgrave to go. Musgrave spins the race car, gets back underway, but boy, does he have some work because, remember, only 12 cars transfer to the big race. Okay, Brock, let me see if we can't raise Steve Grissom on our two-way radio. Steve Grissom, this is Steve Evans. Diamond, please forward. Steve, copy? Yes, sir, go ahead. Steve, you had a little too good a seat for that incident. What happened up there? Uh, I got a little high coming into three over here, and uh, coming off four, Bob Seneca got under me. And we was about dead even going down the front straightaway, and when we got the one, it was time to get back in line. And uh, I think I might have come down on Ted just a little bit. I'll let you get back to action. What a fine young sport Steve Grissom is. One of the rare occasions when you hear a race driver accept a little bit of blame for that problem. So Musgrave's got his work cut out for him. We'll see how it goes as Butch Miller continues to lead it under caution here at Nashville. We'll be back for the restart after this. Back at Nashville Motor Raceway, where the field continues to circle under yellow. Here's how it looks. Butch Miller still out front, as he has been from the beginning. Rusty Wallace in second, followed by Allison, Ridley, and Crouch. In fact, let's see if I can put in a collect call to Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace, this is Steve Evans, Diamond Peace Sports. you have a copy? Yeah, sure do. Go ahead. Well, Rusty, uh, you've got a chance to relax here. What's the track like? What's your car like? Tell me what it's like out there. Well, Steve, the car's pretty good right now. It's on the loose side, and it seems like I've got to run higher on the racetrack to keep the rear wheels hooked up. Right now, i got to drive a defensive race. i got Bobby Allison all over my rear end, and Butch Miller's running good, and I'm caught right in the middle. So everything's cool right now, though. Good to hear it, my friend. We'll talk to you later. Okay, Steve. See you later. Well, we'll be watching that number 27 race car as Butch Miller leads him down toward a green flag. Yes, we've got to restart. And it's Miller, Wallace, and Bobby Allison in the 22 car challenge right away, Steve. Well, you heard Rusty say I got Bobby Allison all over my rear end. Well, now he's got him all alongside him. But look at Wallace. He said that car likes to run high. Well, it's a good thing because that's where he needed to be. Yep, he, uh, he can run high here at Nashville, although, as we said, in turn number three, there's a big bump. But uh, Rusty drove right over the top of it, just like Trickle did earlier. It didn't seem to bother him a bit. There is Wallace still holding on to that second spot. Right behind him, that beautiful red and white 22 car of Bobby Allison, and in the fourth spot, the 98 Thunderbird of Jody Ridley. So, Butch Miller off the pole, just like Mark Martin did uh, in the first of these 50 lappers, currently holding on to about a four car length lead. We well, you know the always crafty and tough veteran Bobby Allison might have got on the, the pedal just a little sooner than Rusty Wallace did because on the restart, that's when he pushed right up. In fact, did stick his bumper right under Rusty's spoiler. So it was Allison on the gas first, that's for sure. And here he comes again. Well, there's four of them, right almost under a blanket, uh, being followed up by Jody there, who back there in that four spot. But nobody's given much here. Bush can't seem to break away from uh, Rusty Wallace in that second spot. And right in back of Wallace is Bobby Allison. So there are four cars. Jody Ridley in that four spot. Call it back just a little bit. And we've got a spin. Out on turn number two, Gary Bell, Houston, Texas, all pro driver, has lost control. He will bring out the caution flag. Doesn't look like there's been a whole lot of damage, but uh, it will definitely slow the field down and give uh, Rusty Wallace and uh, Bobby Allison another shot at Butch Miller. So, Steve, the field backs it down once again. And, Brock, I have got Jody Ridley on the line. Jody, we saw in the first of the twin qualifiers, the Fords appeared to really like this track. How is yours behaving? Uh, well, I got a little bit of right in the middle right now, but, uh, you know, it's a new car and everything, and we, we're pretty 
pretty satisfied with it. We got some more work to do before the 400, Sonny, but uh, we'll get that little push out of it right in the middle. I think it'll be pretty good shape. Okay, thanks for talking with us. Yeah, boy. So as we have a little pause in the action here, let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands. Butch Miller, Rusty Wallace, Bobby Allison, Jody Ridley, and Robbie Crouch round out the top five in this second 50 lapper. But we're going to go to green here, and this is by no means over. Remember, we heard Butch Miller say this is a testing session for him. He's trying to figure out what the tire setup will be for the big race. Well, he has the luxury, of course, of being the only driver in this entire field that will go directly to the 400. And look at Miller. It is Miller. Wallace going up high. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Down lower is 22, Bobby Allison and Jody Redley. Well, down into turn number three they go. As we watch Steve Grissom get a look at uh, Bob Seneker just ahead of him down the front straightaway. Steve Grissom working hard all day, but I don't think his car is handling quite the way he'd like it to be. Notice he's staying down on the low groove, but the faster cars seem to be able to run up high. Look at this. Allison challenges again on the 27 car, Rusty Wallace. Well, Wallace so far is able to hold him up, and Wallace so far also is able to maintain pretty close contact with Butch Miller in that 52 car. Miller is not running away. Here comes Allison down low again and ready to strike right behind Bobby. If he makes it work, it's Jody Ridley. Look at Allison. Just tuck the fender in there. Well, you know, Wallace can feel him if he can't see him. Well, Rusty uh, has little choice but to hang up high because he said the race car just doesn't work down low, but it seems as if Dallas is number 22, where it's just fine in that low group, and it appears to be a very, very difficult joy that Rusty Wallace has got to keep him at bay. And a two-car battle like we're seeing here between Allison and Rusty Wallace really requires total concentration. Doesn't it, Brock? And look at Allison. Move down there. Got to look over and say, hi, Rusty. Here I am. Don't make a mistake. <laughs> well... There is that, uh, what a veteran. I mean, uh, Bobby Allison, oh, they bounced off. He's got a little bent, a little metal there. As Allison continues to just kind of elbow his way closer and closer. It's almost a, an inevitable thing right now that Allison is going to slide uh, Rusty Wallace out of the way to take over that second spot. Rusty moving in on, look at this. Now Allison is dead even as they go down the back straightaway. And in the meantime, Steve, they moved up a little bit on Butch Miller. Butch uh, has got to be looking at those two guys in his rearview mirror and saying, wow, if I make one little bobble, I'm out of this thing. And here is Steve Grissom's view on the red car camera in the 31 machine, and he can see what's going on up front there as well. He's got a pretty good seat for this. But we'll be back for some more of this terrific action right after these words. Stay with us. displaced Robbie Crouch for fifth. And of course, we want to thank Steve Grissom for doing a fine job carrying our onboard camera. The pictures it has given us of those battles up front have just been terrific. And of course, when we saw the camera move, we knew that Grissom had been tagged earlier from behind by uh, Ted Musgrave. So all in all, the onboard camera is just a, a great highlight today in this race. Well, you know, Steve, uh, Bobby Allison has really broken away from Rusty Wallace and is really moving in on Bush Miller. Uh, Rusty, uh, I would imagine, has begun to experience some tire problems because he has faltered substantially and now has his work cut out to hold off Jody Ridley and Bob Seneker. So uh, I would imagine Rusty's experiencing some handling problems, otherwise he wouldn't be this far back. Well, number 84, Bob Seneker, is a man on the move right now. He is down low under Jody Ridley. Typical Seneker strategy. In any race, no matter what the length, it'll be mid to late race before he really shows everything he has. Seneker on the inside, he is under Ridley. And he's now beginning to challenge Rusty Wallace for that third spot. So Seneker, with a car that probably has not only better brakes, but better tires, is beginning to move ahead of both of these automobiles. And don't forget, Steve, they've been battling each other for the whole race. Well, what you said about tires, Brock, I absolutely concur with. Rusty Wallace told us his car was not handling very well. That's hard on tires. Plus, he's been fighting all day long and trying to catch Butch Miller equally hard on tires. I agree that Seneca right now, that's the difference, the rubber on all four corners of that car. Right. There is the challenge by Bobby Allison in the 22 car for the lead. Butch Miller still holds it off. You know, a lot of 
folks think that maybe it's just a driver that kind of stands on the gas like a Seneca and drives by those two guys. Here, Rusty Wallace and Jody Ridley's cars are obviously not working as well as they did in the early stages of the race. Seneca laid back, as you said. Now his race car is better hooked up and better able to uh, run these corners, and that's the difference in the way those two or three cars are working in these later stages. You know, we've talked about Butch Miller's domination of this series since the very beginning. Well, he knew when he came to Nashville that he was going to be in tough. Two laps to go. Can Bobby Allison get around Butch Miller with just a lap and a half now to go? Well, they, they're running into a slower automobile that uh, they've got to get by. Butch Miller goes on a high side. Allison follows him high as they come off turn number four to complete the next to last lap. There is the white flag. This is the final six tenths of a mile here at Nashville. And Allison drives low off turn number two and put a move on Miller. It doesn't work, though. He slips back a little bit as they head into the final two corners. Well, this is really not a track that's fast enough to draft on. And that's how so many times in his career Bobby Allison has won in the last lap. But not today. It is Butch Miller winning the second and final qualifier for the Miller All-American 400. Butch Miller in a Camaro pulls off Bobby Allison in his new Buick. A great contest. We'll be back to talk to the winner. So, Butch Miller wins it from the pole in the second 50-lap qualifier for the big Miller 400. Jody Ridley rounds out the top five. David Green will also transfer to the big race, as will Tom Jones, who finished 11. And now, let's go to Steve with the winner, Butch Miller. Coming out of the 52 car is the winner. Butch Miller, but Butch, I'll tell you, if this race had been a couple of laps longer, we might not be talking. Bobby Allison was right on your bumper. Bobby was fast, and uh, I guess we learned a lot from this race because we are out of control out there. You know, the, the car was just, uh, it was good for maybe 10, 15 laps, and then we were lost. We got to go do some homework. You know, you said you ran this race to continue your education for the big race next week, and apparently you didn't get your master's degree you'd hoped for. <laughs> No, but we got the results we'd hoped for. I mean, not, I mean, we, we finished in front, but hopefully we learned a lot for next week. Okay, thank you, Butch Miller. Great job. Let's go to Brock with the second place finisher, and what a drive he put on. Well, Steve, uh, Bobby Allison was all over Butch's rear bumper for the last couple of laps. Uh, if we had a couple of more, could you have done it? Well, I don't know. Uh, Butch was losing a lot of oil, and it was all over the windshield and all over the track, too. It was pretty slick out there. But the car really handled good and ran good. I was happy with it, and uh, by and by, we would have got him. It would have took more than a couple laps, probably. Well, uh, I'm sure you're set up for the big one next weekend. Uh, this 400 lapper will make a big, big difference in terms of strategy over a few 50 lappers today. Well, uh, really, they're good races for this particular event because they do let us get the cars uh, uh, out there under actual conditions and adjust on them if we need to. And uh, uh, I think the crowd really enjoyed the events today, and uh, it was a good run. And for a brand new, fresh number 22, you got to be happy. Yeah, I am. This Miller American Buick sure did run good all day, being a brand new car. And as you saw this morning, we changed engines. Carl Wagner had built us a couple of different engines, and uh, we changed engines this morning, and it looked like it ran pretty good. Well, congratulations, Bobby. Super job as always. Thank you, Steve. Well, the real charge, as far as this race was concerned, came from you, Bob Seneca. It looked like something clicked all of a sudden. The car just took off. Well, we made some changes before the, uh, the 50 lap or something. We didn't get a chance to do in practice. And it took me a few laps to settle down and get used to what we had done to the car. And after that, it worked pretty good. Well, everybody really has seemed to have the opinion, of course, there's some money and some points, but the big race next weekend is really what you're all hunting for. That's what it's after, and this 50-lapper was a good prelim to get our cars tested and test tires and just get the feel of the place again. And a heck of a good race first through for it, really. Not too bad. Thanks. Not bad at all. Bob Seneca, what a nice drive. Moved up to the field quickly. Okay, Brock? Well, Steve, you're going to see that big Miller All-American 400 right here next week. See you then. The executive producer for American Sports Cavalcade is Harvey M. Palish. Produced and directed by John B. Mullen. Promotional consideration provided for and a fee paid by the Style Auto World Championship Team. The nation's premier source of fast lane fashions. Style Auto, the champion's choice for the style of your life. The American Sports Cavalcade is a presentation of Diamond V Sports.